Yu-Gi-Oh! is one of the more complex card games that I think players ever get into. And what's even more complex and mysterious in this day and age is the Forbidden List. I am here with some awesome, awesome content creators, MBT, Bear X Bear, and Elysium. And we're going to be talking about everything that you need to know about the Forbidden List. As you guys should already know, I'm your host, the Cali Effect King of Games. And welcome to the uh, Yugi cast. I'll think of something else about a good name. Uh, MBT, I, I'm going to leave the floor to you to introduce yourself and all that other great stuff and show us about your greatness. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, hey, everybody. My name is Alex Simo. Uh, you can check me out at twitch.tv slash nimnim, where I stream whenever I feel like it. Um, <laughs> if you are looking for someone to watch other better people's content and make like this face over and over again, like I'm your guy, you know? <laughs> And Bear, I mean, you you already know up and coming channel, you know, doing the work. Tell us about yourself. I appreciate it. So uh, the name is Bear X Bear. The X was originally supposed to be silent, but nobody ever caught on. So I just gave up on that part. <laughs> so, yeah, I make uh, fun educational content. I'm the guy that has really cool thumbnails and that's about it. Check me out. Wait, so it's supposed to be Bear Bear? Like just yeah, Bear Bear? It, 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 it was, yeah, because there's like an anime called Hunter x Hunter. So originally it's supposed to be silent, but it, it never caught on. So I honestly, bro, I just gave up. It's Wait, I've been world. calling that I've been calling it a Hunter. Hunter. Yeah, I've been calling it no, Hunter. I, yeah. Hunter. <laughs> it's Hunter, Hunter. <laughs> and Elysium, not only one of the better players in the Yu-Gi-Oh card game, also a Twitch streamer. I mean, I'm kind of introduced to her before you get to meet her, but go ahead. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, something, 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 Ray is Bay, I suppose. If that's what you want, then I guess go watch my Twitch and YouTube videos I make every, like, probably six months. Otherwise, I just mainly play. You'll probably see me at every YCS, so... Yeah. And Ray is indeed Bay. 100%. I think we can all agree that Ray is a very powerful Yu Gi Oh card as far as uh, aesthetics. I'm not going to go into that. Uh, we're going to talk about this for bit list, though. And basically, the first and most important topic that we are going to discuss is why does the Forbidden List exist in your very own opinion? I personally always felt that the Forbidden List existed because um, Sunshines and Hope. Konami actually enjoys keeping a very balanced and perfect card game, but uh, it can be left open for debate for anything else. MBT, what do you think? Uh, I guess I'm like a little more cynical about it. I feel like it's like money. Like YouTube is one of those very few card games that doesn't have a rotation scheme. So, you know, a card is printed and then is legal until the end of time, you know, until it's banned. Uh, so the complexity and the power of individual cards, if you want people to keep buying new product, it just has to go up and up forever. And obviously that's not sustainable. So something like every six or eight months, Konami decides, all right, like, the new product necessitates the old product moves out and will ban some of the cards from previous older sets. I think we, like, as a community, have kind of come to terms with the fact that decks have, like, a lifespan now. And, like, if you buy a deck in 2018, you shouldn't expect it to necessarily be legal or playable in 2020. And, you know, as a community, I think we're pretty much okay with that at this point. Like, I can't think of any single person maybe even in this call who wants to play striker for the fifth year in a row. Uh, so, you know, um, I, I enjoy playing striker. I mean, I'm sorry I, to I hear that. I'm not to play striker anymore, but Thunder uh, Dragon too strong, the deck but... is good. The deck is good. <laughs> it's not right now, but eh. bear. What do you think about, uh, why does the Yu-Gi-Oh forbidden list exist? Uh, I think it's well, like my whole thing is, if it didn't exist, I probably wouldn't be playing this game anymore because uh, I remember when I first got back into it, like consistently got back into it and like started taking it seriously. Uh, I was on YGO Pro. I was practicing Fluffles. That was the first deck I picked up. And I'm like, Fluffles bro, this deck slaps. I'm, I'm summoning double cracking. I'm like sending their monsters. I'm OTKing them. I'm like, yo, this is sick. And then uh, I go to my first ever regionals. I completely skip locals, skip the whole locals experience, uh, sit down round one, play against True Draco. And this guy summons a masterpiece, and it's like, bro, I'm trying to like send it. This guy's like, nah, it's unaffected. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, it's unaffected by everything. And then he's like, tributing his spells and his traps. I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, this is crazy. This deck is crazy. I'm like, how is this allowed to exist? And I'm like, if they didn't ban this, I probably wouldn't be playing anymore. And you kept playing anyway. That's insane. Yeah. If that happened to me, my first, my first like 
regional experience, I would just put it down. I'd be like, I'm playing Flesh and Blood now. I'm playing Card Fight Vanguard. No. <laughs> My done. very first. <laughs> Let's play this out. My very first experience opens uh, sure. Maximum Crisis, right? Realizes that yep. the set is completely cracked, okay? It's almost a one deck format. Doesn't care. Plays on Dueling Book or uh, Yu Gi Oh! Pro, destroys everybody, thinks he's so good, skips the locals, goes right to the regionals. First round, True Draco. How? Tell, tell easy. me, easy. <laughs> easy. <laughs> I was like, oh, bro, I, I lost the dice roll. I'm like, nah, big deal. I'm going I'm to clap this guy, bro. This guy doesn't know what's coming. He doesn't know, know what's coming. Does. He I, wants I, I, to I, lose I, I, I the dice roll. Cool. <laughs> I didn't know what was coming. I'm like, damn, oh, dude. Oh, oh, that was rough. Oh, that, that, that was a good for sure. <laughs> and he stayed. He stayed in. That's the crazy thing. Oh, man, Elysium, how do you feel about the, uh, you know, why do you think the Forbidden List exists? Um, so I think it's like kind of like an amalgamation of like both both what you and MBT said is like they do need some semblance of game balance to exist because like I think they do actually have a very uh, well understanding of game balance which is why most Yu-Gi-Oh players cannot create an effective Yu-Gi-Oh ban list because they don't know what game I balance is like. Thank you very but much. they do need to set it for the future too. Um, just because like let's say Adam Emancipator still existed to this day, would any of those sets sold? Like, they have to cycle it out eventually, and, like, I mean, sure, they left us have Dragon Link for, a, like, a year and a half, but, uh, oops. But then, like, we also are looking forward to, like, uh, the next couple, like, core sets. Besides us getting Brave Token stuff, we don't have anything to really look forward to as far as new decks on the horizon. So, a lot of people probably want things to get, like, neutered very heavily on these upcoming lists, but they can't do that because otherwise, if we just hit everything good, we're left with a bunch of bad decks. And then the format just kind of sucks overall, and we'll just all cry together equally, and it's just not fun. Like, we saw the last ban list. It was very soft hits, because we, again, still needed more time with these decks to exist so that we could actually effectively play the game of Yu-Gi-Oh!, which was game balance. So it's a little bit of both setting up, and, like, you know, they they, they know how to marry those two things together. You know what? That That's very fair. And I, I, you know, I, I have to say that you, you pose a very good point. And so do you MBT, uh, the whole Konami being after money. I mean, you know, they, they would Our never business. want my wallet. You know what I mean? Like, you yeah. know, you know, I, I'm still a little salty from Spellbook judgment becoming from a common to a secret rare when the dark arm being a rare to a secret rare, but nah, they're not after my wallet. You know, they're, they're pretty good people. Uh, the next topic, though, since we moved on past that, would actually uh, still pertain with the Forbidden List. As we already know, the Forbidden List comes out pretty much whenever it comes out. It feels like my dad going to get milk and coming back with cigarettes whenever he still ain't came back. But, you know, we're waiting for it. But when he does appear, you know, it's it, it's a it's a serene moment. You know what I mean? So what do you guys feel about the Forbidden List um, and not having a set date on it? Uh, I'm gonna leave it up to MBT. We're just gonna go me, MBT, Bear, Elysium in that order because it'll be a lot easier. Um, I'm fine with it. I think that when it first started, I was a little more skeptical, but they they've kind of just been releasing them around the next date anyway, uh, or at least pretty close to them for the last three or four. And uh, yeah, I do like that it gives them a little bit of flexibility. Obviously, that's really important during COVID. Because uh, if they find out about a product delay very late, but they've announced a ban list a lot earlier than that, we maybe get into a situation where like a set's delayed a month, but they have to make the announcement before the set comes out, but the set has some stuff that needs to be banned, but people need time to play the set. So I do like that they have like given themselves a little wiggle room there. I think the only time that it was like a problem, it was like four or five ban lists ago where they let us sit in the no sooner than by like a month. And <laughs> yeah. that... That one sucked, I remember, but every other one has been fine. It's been within a couple of days of the No Sooner Then, and uh, I haven't felt like any of the ban lists since, like, 2018 have been particularly, like, surprising or ridiculous. Bear? Uh, I kind of wish there was a set day. I, I just, I like consistency, and I feel like they've been really consistent. Like, the past year, uh, we all know it's we're either getting it on the day of or, like, a little bit sooner. But before that, the year before that, it's coming like way after, like maybe like a month or two after, which was kind of crazy. And like when I wake up on Christmas, I know it's Christmas. When I wake up on, let's say, January 10th, I want there to be a balance. You know what I mean? That's yeah, fair. That's, that's about it. <laughs> and Elysium? Um, 
I don't know. I don't really mind the set dates because, like, the thing is, with how set dates used to be back in the day, we'd only maybe get, like, one to two banlists, or, like, maybe, like, two banlists a two year, but now they can be a lot more consistent and address problems uh, a lot, like, sooner or whatnot and make it so we don't have to, like, linger too much on certain problems that may exist. And if they feel like something's fine, they, they can extend it out more. They just have a lot more freedom and flexibility, which I think is good to do and make it so they're not like uh rushing to do something or like let's say they have a like for example dragon rulers back in the day like dragon rulers just came out in like may they had to hit it in september so it didn't get like as much playability as like a normal deck may at the time so they had to address something still even though they didn't have anything new on the horizon to kind of like cycle in so it create like if going forward they can just you know kind of pick and choose when they do it they don't have to address problems too quickly and they can take a little bit more time and just you know have some flexibility and who doesn't like a good surprise uh pause <laughs> no uh... <laughs> <laughs> no but uh in all seriousness i'm actually conflicted a hundred percent i i Love being able to play my degenerate deck, whatever deck I pick, whichever is the easiest one for me to get that W, whether it's making DPE Scythe or if it's setting five back row and summoning a super secret combo. Um, I like playing that as long as possible, but as a content creator, it is probably the worst feeling ever because as you know, around that time, production starts to slow down. Certain things that you want to do, it isn't going to necessarily be successful. You got to walk on eggshells. So it, it, it's like the player in me obviously wants uh, to keep playing. And then the the content creator in me is like, when are we going to get the next format? And when's it going to be huge? You know what I mean? But moving forward, um, the current state of the Yu-Gi-Oh card game. Uh, this Yu-Gi-Oh card game, uh, I like to say, has been fair for these past uh, few formats. Uh, but... Some players may not feel the exact same way. I know MBT hates this format. He thinks it's the worst format ever. He thinks that this format needs to go away with it, right? Yeah, no. I any format where crag and control isn't playable is not a format I want to be playing. Dog, see? This, this is why uh, I like you. <laughs> no, um any, any format where hero is not tier one, also unplayable for me. This is why I uh, like you. That was that was one beautiful weekend that we got to pretend that was a good deck. Um yeah, I don't know. I like Yu-Gi-Oh! a lot right now. It's like a particularly like diverse, interesting format, I think. Uh, there's a lot of variety in the top decks. I think the top decks have a lot of good play with each other, which is really important to me. Um, I think uh, the decks that aren't necessarily tier 1, like the stuff below Sword Soul, Birds, uh, Phantom Knight... Uh, oh my god, I know I'm forgetting one. Invoked. Invoked, yeah. Invoked uh, is dope. I, I think that uh, all the decks below that are also really interesting. They're not like boring, stupid FTKs, which is what, uh, frankly, a lot of um, like lower tier decks end up being is like a silly, inconsistent combo. The only thing I guess I would say I dislike about this format is it feels like every one of the top decks and most of the rogue decks have like one or two cards in them that basically just read like your opponent can't play Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, we're not so much building 15 negate boards anymore. We're, like, building a board that includes, like, a Scythe or a Stormwinds or a Protoss or something that, like, shuts out a majority of the metagame. And those cards aren't, like, super difficult to answer. You can, like, play Imperm, you can play Chalice, you can play Droplet, of course. Um, but if you don't have the out, then it does feel really bad. Uh, usually you do, and usually you get really interesting back and forth, and no one's making a board that's that unbreakable that you can't, like, weasel your way out of with, like, a well-timed fusion destiny or something, but, um, there are a higher than average percentage of just, like, non-games this format, where, like, someone resolves something that wins the game, and then you just sit and look at each other. Okay. I have to say that, uh, there's, like, there's, like, an answer to that, and there's a problem with that, right? Like mm -hmm. you, you get, you get a format where there's a lot of answers to the, to the strategies, but at the same time, those answers get expensive. Like, uh, we yeah. have forbidden chalice. That's the perfect example. I love forbidden chalice. One of my favorite cards of all time. Um, mm -hmm. it is a $3 common and it's been reprinted how many times? Wait, really? Who, who wants to buy it's, some chalices? It's, it's, it's like, like a, 
it's like a three dollar com and it gets worse like gold rares gold rares should not be 14 dollars. it doesn't matter it could be like forbidden droplet could be reprinted in a gold rare and it shouldn't be anywhere near in the double digit money like it shouldn't be ten dollars you know what I mean? it's the worst rarity that ever exists beside platinum rare whoa, so hey whoa hey, yo, i won't take platinum rare slander come platinum on platinum rare platinum rare just got mines too Oh yeah, man, dude. platinum rare is the I, worst I, I, rarity ever. Uh, first and ulti <laughs> droplet or chalice. You got you got first and ulti chalices. Yo, let me borrow one. Uh, yeah, I just want to talk. I, I just want to talk. Let me let me see it. You know, let me. Where do you live? Uh, give, let me see if I can find them quick. Give me your address. You know, I, I, I just oh, want to uh, talk. It's uh, one two three <laughs> go away lane. Oh, I thought it was gonna be Sesame Street, but you know, you know. Oh, okay. I I just want to talk, you know. I just need one more. Uh, I only have two though. I need to get a third. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I, I got uh, two first and one unlimited. So it's like I, I just these, want to talk. No, these aren't bendable. I was about to bend it on camera, but <laughs> no, please do not. Please do not. <laughs> yeah, but I should get healthy effect failures. Is that more? Yeah, than definitely, definitely. I I can bend no, six no, if you on. want me to. I'm gonna make a. <laughs> I'm gonna make people cry <laughs> in your on. video right now. Hold she's on. literally just gonna like she, oh, she no. we turned from a forbidden list to a swag contest. She's like, yeah, this is my swag. Watch this. Forbidden list, nah, swag. This, this, yeah. this is where Elise loses seven hundred dollars. <laughs> my only my only swag is yeah. um my girlfriend's I'll credit card. Taylor. Mm. Is uh, it first? No, no, no. Come on. Oh. I mean, no, hey, to, no, to, to no, be no, fair, no. that's how they've been. So like it's it's perfectly fine. It's it's built that way. Oh. All right, why are you doing this to me, Ali? Come on, come on. Oh, come on. All right, now that's that's a little too much for me. Come on, come on. No, but um, you know, it's literally a thing on my stream to redeem channel points for, and I love doing it every time. <laughs> if he has to take, he has to take time off. Whoa! But the problem with that, like, is that they're my cards, Joseph. Oh, okay. It's okay. <laughs> I think he went to go get water. I think he actually just went to go get water, but um. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is in actuality um cards like forbidden chalice are extremely expensive for no reason like you get a common that's three dollars and we have so many common prints then you get the the gold rares which are like fifteen dollars no matter however you see gold rares then you get ultimate rares which are don't act you know what i mean like and and that's like the low end cards like you get dark ruler no mores which are like uh, ten dollars for commons you know what i mean and it, cr it creates a very very unhealthy game where unless konami prints these things enough times they get ridiculously expensive and extremely hard to handle um and i think that 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 is a huge sub problem uh for our particular topic which is you know the current state of the Yu-Gi-Oh card game and i think that that's a huge problem but bear uh what do you think about your uh the current state of the Yu-Gi-Oh card game uh, oh my god, that threw me off, like, off topic. Yeah, uh, we, we segued. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I think my problem is, I, I like the format. I'm like, I, I'm a little in between. I like the diversity, but at the same time, there's cards like Protoss and uh, Harpy's Featherstorm that, like, have very little counterplay. Like, if you don't open Rebo against Harpy's Featherstorm, what, what are you doing? And with Protoss, like, yeah, you can say you can open Imperm, Chalice, Drop It, whatever. But the thing is, like, do you hold that and let them play with through Moye and like possibly make the Baron? And then, at that point, like, if they have to negate, what are you going to imperm? Like, it doesn't matter at that point. Like, you got to open two. So at the same time, I, I don't know. It's weird. I like the diversity. Like, the local experience is more fun. Like, I'm playing against like Cyber Dragons. I'm playing against like Prank Kids, Live Twins, like all this random stuff. But then, I, honestly, I think if they just hit those the problematic cards, it'd just be a lot better. You know, I can't even disagree with that. I think that uh, there are some problematic cards. I think we may disagree with the problematic cards, but there are some problematic cards in this Yu-Gi-Oh card game that uh, definitely need to be addressed. Uh, I know Elysium, she definitely is happy as long as Engage is at one, right? I mean, I, I'd rather it would have stayed banned, but I mean, it obviously isn't having the impact I thought it was going to, but like, I, I'd still rather it be banned. I mean, Striker is easily a, a, it's a tier one deck. It's a tier zero deck. Like, you know, any format comes in, it just dominates, right? I mean, yeah, it definitely has the potential right now. So, like, you know, you can't argue with it. It's just, like, I still don't think there's any reason to reintroduce it. I mean, like, yeah, they wanted to please, like, people with, like, you know, since they're making the new support and everything, but it just didn't seem like... Yeah, I guess that was the only reason why you take engage off, but it still didn't seem like absolutely necessary at the same time. But like, I mean, whatever. <laughs> What's better than one engage, guys? Three engage, baby, bring it back. 
He really put up the zero. Why do you hate engage so much, MBT? What's going on, Why man? Why does a draw one get an upside? That's what I want to know. Oh, well, I mean the draw the draw one is is the uh is is not the upside. That's then why does the Rota get an upside? <laughs> hey man, you know that the, the Rota needs an upside, dog. I mean, haven't you played um? What's a card like Engage? You play Moye. You play Moye. Moye's a, a a search one and a draw one, right? That's not about a, right. Not a big Moye fan either. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Speaking of Moye, why he might not be a card that is on a lot of players' minds to be banned. There are definitely some cards that players are genuinely looking at. I mean, like Birdman hand rubbing, like can't wait for the forbidden list to come out for these particular cards to get banned. And that's exactly what we're going to discuss next. This is going to be some sort of a lightning round where we talk about particular cards that definitely could be addressed. One being Imperial Order. I personally feel that Imperial Order is one of the worst Yu-Gi-Oh cards in the entire card game and allow me to explain why. When Imperial Order first came off the Forbidden list in about 2017, spell cards were not as impactful. Cards like Ghost Ogre, Ash Blossom, and Joy Spring, Hand Traps were the rave. But um, as we get deeper into Yu-Gi-Oh and like we've all said, uh, the power creep is definitely uh, changed, uh, we know that power spell cards like Dark Ruler No More, Forbidden Droplets, and, and Forbidden Chalice are probably the only ways to break your opponent's board, like the better on Protos board that you were talking about. A better way, I mean, obviously you can't out the Protos uh, with those particular cards going second, but a better way to break some of those boards is to use those cards. But what exactly do you do when your opponent flips that IO against your board breaking spell card? Well, we go right back to the formats where your opponent just makes a break my board type board and then has the vanities. Uh, how do you feel about that? Uh, I think... I think Herman, uh, the day after the uh, B Trooper second, uh, made a tweet that was like, yeah, we can't ban Io while Mystic Mine is still at three. Because like, it, it's this card that every deck is randomly playing, and it outs this other card that's really frustrating if you're not playing main deck outs. Uh, but I want both of those cards yeah, banned. That's not, it sounds like two cards just order. need to be banned. That's, that's all yeah, it sounds no. like. <laughs> I, I order is one of my least favorite cards of all time uh, i've been clamoring for a ban since the day it came off i i don't know what you're talking about i was losing to it in 2017 maybe i was playing the wrong decks <laughs> well but, see uh, the thing is you uh, tribute it with the true draco card right and then oh, you beat bear yeah, with it that, that's how you beat it oh, that's how you do it <laughs> you, you beat over my crack and that can't target your masterpiece yeah that's awesome you you imperial <laughs> order the polymerization and then you tribute it all for your for your masterpiece come on big brain yeah. big brain it. <laughs> no i i want this card banned very badly yeah <laughs> Bear, what do you think? So, like, the whole YCS situation was kind of funny to me because this Reddit thread pops up. It's like, Imperial Order just won the YCS. And you look at Herman's list, and Herman's main decking, like, literally five spell cards. So, like, it's funny. You literally could have made that thread for, like, any other reason or, like, any other time. But uh, before people attack me, I I'm completely indifferent on order, whether it gets banned or it stays. But, like, personally, I I'm okay with this thing. Like, I I'm the oddball here. I'm going to have some bad takes. It is what it is. But uh, that indeed. the thing is... <laughs> I think it's uh, the diversity that kind of impacts uh, people not having the outs to Imperial Order because people can't justify playing those outs like Heavy Storm Duster or Typhoon just because those cards don't really deal with a lot of the other decks in the format like Sword Soul, uh, the Wonderies, uh, whatever else, like Lyrilus Try, like they don't do anything, right? So like there's no reason to side them, you can't justify it because right now the format's kind of evolved to you got to play X card that hits the most amount of decks. Like, X generic card. So, yeah, honestly, I'm, I'm fine with it. I understand why people hate it. If it goes, it goes. I'm okay with it. That's fair. You know what? I I, I don't agree with your opinion at all. I, I still think you're a glue eater. Like, there's there's no way around <laughs> it. You're, you're still a glue eater, dog. But, like, no, no, there, I don't agree. There's, I just I just can't. Dog. I can't. <laughs> I can't. You my boy, but sometimes your boys can be wrong. <laughs> I was waiting for you to be like, listen. Your opinion, I disagree with, but, and you were just like, and it sucks, and it sucks, it's terrible. It's, 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 I can't, I can't get behind it, like, I, I can disagree with you too, right? I mean, not, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. not this guy over here, this guy, uh, he, he says color in, in, in defense and honor wrong, so like, we're already on the wrong side. <laughs> Yeah, they say some questionable things about the American education system. So, bro, hey, I, you maybe, know what? Maybe, maybe we're right. You're know. right. You're right. But when I see that bald eagle your way, you better watch. <laughs> Alicia, what do you what do you think about IO? Uh, I mean, 
I think it's gonna be hard to find people besides good old Bear that uh don't want that card gone, and understandably so. I mean, the card's just definitely uh. I don't know why it even came back, but you know, we're here. It, it is what it is. Unga Boonga. I just want to activate Engage or something. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. And uh, the next card is actually cards are actually a pair of cards because people highly debate on these particular cards and if they should be banned and which one should be banned. Some players say both. Some players say one or the other. A lot of players say neither. And that's going to be Artifact Dagda and Artifact Scythe. Now, normally I'm a person that wants to hit the problem i've always advocated for the problem like banning vert instead of banning red eyes fusion because red eyes dark dragoon is just a terrible card but again for a totally different you know conversation uh and the reason why i'm swapping this time from artifact scythe to artifact dagda is just look at the history of dual overload uh there's just been some incredibly insane cards like, it, it feels like at the end of Master Rule 4, Konami was like, let's just break Link monsters and let's make them ridiculous. Union Carrier, Hockley Fibers, which thankfully has toned down, but at the cost of banning every plausible tuner. Uh, Selene is finally seeing play. Vert is, is amazingly good. Um, and Dagda is in a really special spot because not only is Dagda the... If you ban the Scythe, then Dagda falls to obscurity, right? But Dagda is the reason why Scythe is good in the first place. Without Dagda, Scythe becomes a card that's fairly decent for other strategies, but not necessarily the huge thing. The big problem is players will go Vert and then make the Dagda activate Vert's effect, summon DPE, get your Scythe face down. That's a free lock. That's If you can summon monsters, you got that free lock inside of your deck. And obviously the problem would be the Dagda as it allows you to float the Scythe Whereas we have Scythe uh, off the list with Artifact Sanctum. Go ahead and play your Sanctum Scythe card. Nobody cares about that. You know what I mean? What you got for me? Uh, I, I pretty much agree. Um, I I don't know. Scythe is such a weird card. Uh, I think we probably have to keep Dagda on the ban list. Because if we don't, then people will just pivot to playing Morale Tech. Which is, I mean, it's just as strong for sure. Um, you, wait, wait, no. about, you, you think Morale, <laughs> morale Tech is like... like the bees yeah, that's, knees? that's gonna break it yeah <laughs> no i i'm i i'm i don't like scythe as a general like game design principle but i think like the cards that would start playing sanctum in place of like dagda combos i think that's fine like th they're what trap decks those are pretty historically bad right now i think eldlich can be allowed to board into three copies of sanctum if they really want to um and then activate it before the eldlixers because the lock works wrong I do dislike that there are some, like, cute little things you can do with, like, DPE and Dagda to get it in through, like, an Imperm or a Chalice or something that is just a little too adorable. Um, and, uh, in, in general, I, I don't like Dagda and Scythe because, well, while I was talking about earlier, this is, like, this hugely diverse format with a bunch of interesting decks... Uh, from the rogue level down, it does kind of feel like you have to make a consideration before you play the deck. Like, does my deck's linear game plan compete with Dagda Scythe? And if it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're playing, like, Generator or Ad Emancipator or anything. You have to be like, should I just be making Dagda Scythe? And a lot of the time, the answer is, yeah, like, I should. And so I would, if nothing else, like to see Dagda taken out just so... A diversity of decks can mean a diversity of play styles and not a different flavor of monsters that goes into Dagda Scythe. So, you know, I guess that's my take on it. That's fair. I think I think that's 100%. That's pretty spot on. Better than what I have to say. Uh, what, what you got, Bear? You're going to say neither of them needs to be banned? No, 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 no. I, I, I agree with you guys here. I, same boat. I think Dagda is actually the problem card here. And um, I'm also like a rogue enthusiast. Like be, before Dagda was a thing, nobody was really playing like the Sanctum package with Scythe. Uh, unless like you're a rogue deck and you're really looking for that extra win con and I, I feel like just hitting it and like taking away that like small package that can be put into like a rogue deck or like a deck that's not as good that really needs that extra win condition I, I, feel, I feel like that kind of sucks for other players but like I, I'm on board like for the obvious reasons that you guys said and obviously for like the rogue players too oh finally all right well, actual logical <laughs> no just that's what, yeah. you, what you got Elysium. how do you feel about the uh the dagda scythe from uh from a Sky Striker standpoint. I mean, not everything has to be about Strikers. Like, I play, like, every deck this format. Most of my tops don't even involve Striker. Like, it I involves mean... Striker. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll just I mean, it. 
least uh, uh, wash someone... up one trick, only plays one deck, has definitely not topped multiple times in different <laughs> formats. Didn't win a prize card like... with Dragon Link or something. That was no. that was Sky that was Sky Striker too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I did have Striker Dragon, but uh, hey, yeah. Uh, as far as like Dagda Scythe are concerned, if I was gonna ban one, it would be Dagda. But I don't think either needs to be addressed just yet, because if we look at the format how it is right now. Like, the three decks that are undisputed tier one are going to be, like, uh, the Bird deck, Invoked, and uh, Sword Soul. None of those decks play that combo. And so it helps bolster, like, some of the smaller decks. And even though it makes it so there's not diversity in cards being played, like MBT said, those decks still get a boost. But it's obviously not enough to make it so that they're one of the top competing decks, which means it's not technically a problematic card yet. It is a problem in a sense, but it isn't like format defining or format warping to the degree that it needs to go just yet. Especially when like Phantom Knight, we don't even have Brave Token stuff yet. Like it hasn't even reached, reached its full potential yet. And it's not even like fully meta. So I don't think it necessarily needs to get answered right now, but at a later point when, you know, more decks that are in that tier one spot are abusing it, then I could see that happening. But as of right now, it probably doesn't need to be answered. Wow. That's, um, I actually, I agree with that. That, that makes sense when you break it down that way. Um, I do think, like you said, we, I think we all agree that it's a problematic card, but right now, like if you look at the top decks, it's not a problem. And Konami has notoriously thrown cards on the back burner, Imperial Order, cough, cough, for later to be addressed and be a very huge problem. You know, but um, the next would be a card that isn't necessarily a problem. I personally feel it is very, very poor game design. Players have always, since I guess these cards have been into the competitive scene, debated on what should be banned. Is it the Red Eyes Fusion or Destiny or Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, uh, the DPE or the Fusion Destiny or the Preda Plant for Anaconda? Now, I feel that Preda Plant for Anaconda is the exact same as Union Carrier. I feel it's the exact same as Electromite. It's the exact same as Nightmare Mermaid. It is just an ill-designed card. And anytime a polymerization in a fusion card comes out, you got to look over your shoulders with this Preda Plant card. I don't think that Dragoon was ever a problem. I never thought it was a good card. I still don't think it's a good card. Uh, if you lose to Dragoon, I mean, hey, that's all I got to say. And uh, DPE... I feel like the best part about DP is that you get to draw two cards. Like I, I will do, I'll do just about anything for a pot of green in Yu-Gi-Oh. Like I'll pay half my life points every single time. This gives me a monster, a potential free special summon and draw two, but I'll just take the draw two. You know what I mean? But, um, I definitely think verts the problem in, in this particular situation. But what do you, what do you got for me? Do you think it's the fusion monsters, the spell cards or vert in itself? Uh, they're going to do something with DP. I don't know what it's going to be. I, I hope that I think the cutest way they can deal with it is to ban Celestial. I think that that's adorable. Wait, wait, I don't time know out. if it's good. Why you why you want to take away my draw two, dog? What you doing? Don't I do? That's the best part. Draw two and hero. Come on. No, 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 no. no. I'm talking about just like it. Oh yeah, I guess I see what you're saying. Damn. Yeah, no, I guess I would. <laughs> Uh, it's so frustrating because for a long time I was like a Verte truther and I was like, you know, like Verte is the problem, you know, it always the fusion mechanic is going to be hampered by this card. But like, I, f I feel like it really isn't with Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer. Like, obviously any deck can make Verte if they get like interrupted and end on this really powerful monster that does net you advantage over the course of a couple of turns. Uh, but every deck is also packing outs to Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer right now, so it's Fair. not like that backbreaking. Like you said, I think Dragoon is a generally decent card that's fine for most decks to deal with it like it's a hassle but you know like whatever it eventually you can figure out a way to resolve it um i think the problem card in the dp line is fusion destiny uh i think that if you ban verte anaconda it's going to make zero change in a lot of decks uh they're just going to be like whatever i'll just play three fusion destiny three two garnet ratio i'll play that all day um, it sucks really bad for Hero because I I need it to start combos. Uh, but you can make the argument as a Hero player, no, no, we can still make Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer with Polymerization. Like, it's like the only deck that can And do it's that. very, very, very easy for the deck to do it. Despius can yeah. do it, by the way. But it, it's very, very easy for uh, the Hero strategy to do it. But, mm -hmm. um, ah, man, Fusion Destiny? Ah, hey, I mean... Obviously, the cards that send from deck are crazy. Um, I mean, the whole reason that Dragoon is playable is because Red Eyes Fusion is, like, a really cool shit-all fusion. Uh, but 
Fusion Destiny is a Shadal Fusion that doesn't lock you from summons and draws you two cards next turn. That's fair. So I think, unfortunately, if we hit something from that, it'll probably have to be that. I don't think it will be this next format because everything's too new. But sometime in the future, I think that'll be the hit. Hear me out, guys. Get your Fusion Destinies now, flip them, and then sell your ultis before it's too late. You heard it from MBT. Yeah, they're not going to ban it before the ulti comes out. Don't worry. <laughs> what, what do you think about this, uh, Bear? Well, bear, uh... Bear. Oh, dude. okay. So I, I disagree that Fusion Destiny is the problem card. I, I think hitting Verte is the right move because I feel like they've recently come to a realization that the best way to fix the fusion mechanic, instead of forcing the player to send two cards from like their hand or field, it, the best probable way is to enforce a mechanic that sends from the deck. And I feel like now they're just trying to find that balance. And we're kind of seeing that with Despia too. They, they went a little bit overboard with that card too. That card is absolutely insane. They, they went uh, way they, 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 they went way overboard. I, I think they're still trying to find the balance of how to make the mechanic worth playing. Cause like, obviously you're not gonna play it if it's just summoning a vanilla that doesn't do anything. And I, but at the same time, you're not gonna summon it. I, I, I don't know, it's weird, but I, I still think Verte is the problem card. Cause I feel like going forward that the way they're going to build around the fusion mechanic is just to keep making these spell cards that send cards from the deck or like maybe from the extra deck in the future. I, I don't know. That's just my opinion. It's crazy that you look at it that way because there has been like, Konami has tried this over and over again. Should all fusion, red eyes fusion, should all fusion was busted, then not great, <laughs> then busted, then not great. Red eyes fusion was completely trash until vert fusion destiny. Like you could just look at this card. We were just waiting for a destiny hero monster. That's really like just looking at the card because it says do whatever you want. And then at the end, summon this card. So, yeah, I, I think that they are. They probably are looking for a correct balance on, yo, what kind of fusion card that will send from deck will be balanced for the Yu-Gi-Oh card game. But Alicia, what do you think is the problem out of these three? Um, I mean, if they're going to hit anything, I think you need to hit the the monsters themselves you know the enforcer and the the dragoon obviously dragoon doesn't need to have shit happen i mean only the striker players want that card gone at this point but uh <laughs> um i don't even think that like uh uh enforcer needs to be hit yet especially since it like just came out and it's still even though again same problem as met mentioned for dagda is that it gives every one of these rogue decks a potential to uh you know compete but with the same exact card so there's no diversity in that but like i mean that's still cool that there's that diversity that exists and gives a new boost and i don't think it completely like encapsulates like or uh overshadows what the decks themselves do so it's breathing a lot of new life in a decks that didn't have it before and i think that's really nice to have and i don't think it's like too overly broken to answer most of the time so i think it's perfectly fine right now but if they're gonna hit anything it's one of those i don't think verte is the right way to go because i think it if you get rid of that instead of the actual problem cards i think it just limits uh future like fusion monster design and makes it so you aren't able to easily rely on some of your strategies as well so i think verte is really well designed uh for the mechanic it's just, unfortunately, we have easily abusable generic things that do exist, but, like, Red Eyes Fusion isn't that broken. Fusion Destiny, hero players can have fun, whatever. I don't care. You can do what you want with your <laughs> life. But, like, eventually those cards do need to get answered, but I just don't think it's, like, right this second. But maybe at a future point in time, they can hit Enforcer if they feel like they still need to, but I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, that's fair. You know, uh, Destiny Hero Celestial feels like when you ask your mom for pot of greed, they tell you you got pot of greed at home. Except your pot of greed comes with like a whole like meal. Like, I don't know. It, it definitely feels a, a, a different type of way. But uh, the last card that we're talking about, I'm actually not even going to, because you guys talked about it, but I'm not even going to put a lot of thought into it. I don't think Arcanemesis Protos deserves to be. I ain't even going to look its way. It's, it's that bad of a Yu-Gi-Oh card. You guys don't like it? We'll play different attributes, okay? That's all I got to say. Just... Bro, I'm I don't, just trying to play speed rights. Hilariously, uh, DPE resolves a lot of the problems with Protos, right? Because, like, I, unless you're playing a dark deck, in which case, you know, it sucks to be you, right? You know, but <laughs> don't, else, don't play a dark deck, guys. Yeah, <laughs> right? <it's> unfortunately, dark. <laughs> well, what do you think, Bear? I just, bro, just let me play speed rights in peace. I don't understand. Just like, let why you is that so hard? Speed in peace. 
My man wants speed roids in peace. You know what? I, They're wind locking you with Protoss. You got other problems. I'm just saying. No, no they looking for you. If they actually summon, imagine game one, right? You go to a regional after playing this deck on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro for like three days, right? Straight. You go up, you play against a true Draco player, and he summons Protoss, dog. Protoss. Watch this. Okay. And he declares win right off the bat. How I'll do you try, feel? Bro. I, 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 I'm playing like Digimon or something or Pokemon, bro. I quit. <laughs> I'm done. It's over. Bo, oh, man. But just as much as players do want cards uh, on the Forbidden List, players want cards off. And one of the most heavily debated on cards, one of the hottest cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! always talked about is Maxi. And they always like, yo, um, what do they say? It's at three in the OCG, so can we get it at three in the TCG? What are your thoughts about this, MVT? Nah, come on. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I, I've like exhausted this every single uh, ban list discussion. Uh, I imagine we're never going to get it to three. I'm happy we're never going to get it to three. Uh, I don't doubt that it enables some kind of interesting skilled gameplay, uh, but I don't want to have to learn that gameplay. Uh, so I am I am not in favor of Maxi. I don't I don't think it is a particularly fun or interesting card. And as you guys should know, Bear obviously wants it at three because it promotes skill gameplay for some reason. Go ahead. Oh, Bear. bro, are, are you guys ready for a bad take? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, definitely. You, you've yeah. been saying them all yeah, day. Tell me Max C to one. Look me in the eye and say Max C to one. Dog, that's even worse than three. <laughs> okay, no, you're, you're not getting a bad take from me. I, I agree. I don't think the card should come back. Uh, like, like for the obvious reasons, and I, I also don't like like forcing decks to play three maxi like you have to play it if you're not playing it you're losing like you're missing out on so much just by at least it feels like that right yeah like low-key if when maxi comes to three i'm just gonna play true draco i'm gonna play any deck that just does it i'm gonna play flunder i'm gonna try to figure it out if some deck plays maxi i will play a deck that does not special summon that is three less cards that you can play against me it feels great elysium how do you how do you feel about this um, oh, we can play for Shriker. anyone who says that Maxi is a skillful card, I really want to question your entire existence at this point. Like, you need to reevaluate how you look at the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. I'll be honest with you. Like, no, that card is not healthy. It does not promote anything different or interesting. It literally limits deck building in the stupidest ways possible. Literally, out of Emancipator. Never even got to be a good deck at OCG because of Max C. That seems crazy. That is There's crazy. There's so many decks that can exist in OCG for the simple fact that Max C exists. It limits so many aspects of what makes Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! It literally ruins the game. There are plenty of OCG players that I've interacted with that say they hate Max C and they wish they would just ban it. It's not a healthy card. It doesn't promote the right aspects of like deck building and playing. Like imagine going full combo. And you still just have Max C, and your opponent goes Dark Ruler no more, and you just Max C them afterwards, and then it literally doesn't matter. That like, feels worse than Imperial, doesn't it? That feels way worse than Imperial. Exactly. Like, oh. And imagine if you're playing like the Striker Mirror match, you go Normal Summon Ray, Link in a one Link, and you get Max Seed, and now you just don't play. My slow ass deck doesn't do shit. Nothing does anything, and it's Hayate not pass. a good feeling. Hayate Pass. They'll never see it coming. They'll never see it coming. You know, they'll never see like, it. Like that's just the truth of what will happen to too many Yu-Gi-Oh decks. Like yes, there are ways to play around it. There are ways to play properly with minimizing the blowback of it but it's just not a healthily designed card it was introduced in a time period where compared to today those decks are kind of just some hot garbage they don't have the same like idealistics behind them every deck that's even considered like a control deck or a slower deck still it's a special summon more than a control deck back in the day the ways decks exist now are entirely different you can't apply a card that was printed 10 years ago to apply to the logic that exists in today's format. <laughs> so you telling me I can't normal some of my fossil dino patchy to follow and pass in today's Yu-Gi-Oh? I mean, you can do whatever you want. You like if you're just okay not winning, like that's perfectly <laughs> fine. I, I I can't tell you how to live your life. You know what? Your mom. I I appreciate that for not telling me how to live my life because one way I definitely want to live my life is what masterpiece off the forbidden list. Look, I know masterpiece is one of the most problematic cards ever. I know, I know, I know, I know. Here's my response. Get over it, okay? Look, you have never seen the wrath of Yu-Gi-Oh players until they start splashing Masterpiece in everything. And then you see them play Masterpiece in Sword Soul, and it's like everything sideways, dog. Have you ever went against a board 
where they have a masterpiece unaffected by traps and they can black out it. Like it's, it's the most surreal feeling ever. You know what I mean? They can tribute summon masterpiece, then black out their own masterpiece unaffected by traps, then destroy cards on your field with masterpiece. It's beautiful. I think you're going crazy, my dude. Yeah, I, I don't believe that. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's that, that, it's that, crazy. That, that Dog, it's crazy. Y'all don't, y'all don't, y'all don't like that interaction, bear. Mm. What? Why are you laughing, girl? <laughs> it be, what? Alicia, you like spell cards? Come on, you you like spell? She's not even. I, like, <laughs> I don't know. I. I have a whole different argument for why I wouldn't want Masterpiece coming back, but that's why. Just that. Why Masterpiece is such a it's such a fair and balanced card. I'll, I'll, if anybody can tell me why Masterpiece can't come back, I would appreciate it. Okay, I I have a reason why that most people probably won't think of when they're considering ban list things. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so buckle up, y'all. This applies to a lot of different aspects, and also why I thought Engage shouldn't come back either. Don't break so, my heart. <laughs> No, it, it's probably not something you'll expect, but it comes back to the essence of game balance and the, the money aspect and planning for the future types of things. So, I think the best way to look at Yu-Gi-Oh! is forward, not necessarily backwards. You can look backwards to some degree, but in order to grow your game properly, you need to look forward as much as you possibly can. Bringing back these cards doesn't bring any inherent, like, you know nothing good really comes back from doing that. They can't sell any future product. They can't really like promote anything that well. Like if they make new support cards, cool, but what's the need for doing that when they could design so many newer and cooler types of cards to exist? So why, like if players don't progress along with the game, the game just dies overall. So I think from a natural game state point of view, if a card, if a powerful card can exist and it just brings Unbanning the card just brings the deck back into pure contention for no reason whatsoever. I don't think it should come back so that we can focus on the future and focus on new and different ways to play Yu-Gi-Oh! as opposed to just sticking to true Draco for 10 years. So you're telling me, just like how MBT got Skyscraper 2, we're going to get a Masterpiece 2? Yes. I, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I... Yeah, I guess I guess I agree with that. That's pretty convincing. I, I um, that's that's like I, that's okay. Yo, I, I gotta ask if you um if you want masterpiece back, do you want it at one or do you want it at three or do you want it at two? Oh no, it the card just does bad. not matter. The card just literally does. Oh, not oh, you were, you were like I thought you were dead. No, no, God, no, 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 no. Oh no, no, you guys thought I was. Oh no, no, God, no, 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 no. Masterpiece, like again, I don't know if the masterpiece is one of the worst designed Yu-Gi-Oh cards that I think. I'm in love with. I, I love the card. It's amazing. But I understand that like it's it's ridiculously good. And once I saw a Sword Soul, it wasn't even Sword Soul True Draco. It was like True Draco cards and Masterpiece just happens to be a worm. So like he he does some really cool things. And there was like so many other interactions. But the biggest interaction is that he contributes summon after negating your board and then black out his own masterpiece, which was unaffected by traps. And I was like, yeah, that that's no. That, that's, that can't happen. But no, seriously, no. Zero. Zero is where I need what, to be. What if I said I'm okay with it being at one? No. You're, 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 that was at one! He did the, that at the one! Between, yeah, <laughs> the difference between one masterpiece and three masterpiece doesn't matter. It like, really doesn't. Uh, the, in my opinion, I don't know. I'm, I haven't tested it with Sword Soul, it, but honestly, it's ridiculous. It, it sounds real bad. It's it does not ridiculous. sound good at all. It's, it's it's like Sword Soul with an extra layer of whatever it needs. Like it's. I feel like almost every deck that was like splashing masterpiece, it was complete cope. People were trying to tell me, "Oh, it's busted in weather. You can't bring it back to three. And I was like, "You're out of your mind." Um, True Draco pilots uh, hated playing three masterpiece. Uh, it was bricky as shit. They hated playing two masterpiece. I I was um uh testing with a uh, uh, Sorab Pasikani all like through the like top sixteen at uh twenty in 20, 2017 NEWCQ, and he was just like I would cut this to zero if I could, but like the existence of masterpiece like has to happen in the deck. Like it's just a terrible card. Every time I banish it off desires, I feel so good. I'm like, thank God I can't draw masterpiece later in the game. The best true Draco uh, deck is actually three dynamite with a mono auto. Yeah, three three dynamite is so <laughs> That's much. That's like more the best one. Like it's ridiculous. But uh 
I, I think that probably the best argument for Masterpiece coming back is that I think True Draco is kind of fun to play right now. Like, it's boring, it's like a big Floodgate deck, but like it's doing something. If you put Masterpiece back in the equation, a lot of your turns just end up being like, all right, buddy, like, do you have the outer, don't you? And uh, that, I think, is really the only reason I wouldn't want it back. I think the card is super toxic, not fun to play against, but honestly, probably a low enough power level that I don't care. Isn't isn't um true Draco pretty much Eldritch? Like you play rivalries and there can be only ones and then you get rid of them. Like it's the same thing, right? Like it's I, the I exact guess you do same that. thing. <laughs> like just tribute your rivalry after you break their board with your rivalry, right? Like same thing. Yes. Oh That's man. Cool. That's good shit. <laughs> and Alicia, I'm pretty sure you agree, right? Masterpiece is like oh, right. Yeah, I mean it's just, like I said, I just don't think it has any need to come back. I don't think it fulfills anything and promotes anything by needing to come back and just it's just there's just no need for it so fair, fair yeah and the last card the last card because we're, we're it's 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 a touchy subject because this is another one of my favorite looking cards i definitely hated playing against this card thunder dragon colossus um Let's just move on to the real last card because yeah, it, no, it's it's, yeah. it's agreeably no, yeah, no, no for no, all no. of us, right? I like I figured it would it, just no, it's it's, no, it's, no, it's no, 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 have, no, have no, you no, read no, Chaos Space? Have you read Chaos Space? Yeah, like like <laughs> sorry, <laughs> thoughts him, like good luck, but no. You know, yeah, I, I, oh my god, I have a perfect I, forbidden I literally, list. If you What's want up? to, I have a whole other debate on Tatsun's channel trying to argue it where it cannot come back for any reason, and I it's still I will I never. I wish Tatsun would just say I like the card. Like, I know it's broken, and I like the card. He's like, hopium. no, no, no. Hopium. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopium. Like, yeah. I like the card. I understand. And, and the perfect forbidden list I made, I brought it off the forbidden list to one. And ironically, was there... it not really. It was it was okay. It was okay. Like, the decks that played it were, like, Dino, that played, like, Nemesis Corridor. Like, it, it was... It, it seemed really good, but once you broke it down, it was okay. But, like, even backing up Elysium's point, after seeing it, it was like why you know what i mean like it just didn't it didn't even fit the flow of the Yu-Gi-Oh game even when it was played in thunder dragon it, it didn't even feel like a thunder dragon deck when you played it in there so like it was just unnecessary it was really really unnecessary but it can come off like it no, could no, it fuck? just it, it no, doesn't need no, no, no it doesn't need no, to no, no. It, <laughs> no it can't come off <laughs> But you would just play. Card. You would just play the the like Thunder Dragon Link that people were labbing, right? Like, no, no, you can't because 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 LP and um Striker are at one in band you respectively. Can, oh, no, you can still play like a Thunder Dragon Link deck because like again Chaos Space. You just oh you no, can, you can Rocket Tracer into your like, Chaotic like, Ruler and do a whole bunch yeah, of crazy shit. Dragon, that's just from having one Colossus is actually really huge. It fixes so many problems that Thunder Dragon currently has that it actually would. 100% become a tier one deck, and I think would probably be one of the best decks of the format. Jesus Christ. So, so bring it back. Well, I'm not seeing no, it. Like... it doesn't need to, though. <laughs> the thing is, I, it look, I like its arm. <laughs> yeah, so the last real card, I actually feel bad that I didn't uh, invite Triff to this one because you know how he would feel. Uh, Heavy Metal Foes Electromite. Um, I have a very bad beef with Electromite because I don't think. That it is a Yu-Gi-Oh card that deserves to be on the forbidden list. By it actually being in competitive terms. Like, we know Graceful Charity should never come off the forbidden list. It's just a ridiculously amazing card. It's better than Pot of Greed. Like, what's better than draw two, draw three, and then discard? Like, that's ridiculous. Electromite is not that type of card. But the fact that players refer to Pendulum as a mechanic, or as an archetype and not a mechanic is because of Electromite. And and it's just one of those very poorly designed cards. Like how I feel Vert is a very poorly designed card, Nightmare, uh, Mermaid, and other cards. Uh, MBT, uh, tell me why you hate Triff as well. Yeah, you know, I mean, <laughs> same, same type of deal. Uh, no, he got too many subs too fast. No, um, <laughs> not a big, not a big Electromite fan. Uh, I was frustrated with it when it, from the point that it first came out. And had that dumb stupid it had an FTK. Uh yeah, it's had like four FTKs, but like Firewall was also involved. <laughs> the the reason I hate Electromite is um one, yeah, it railroads pendulum strategies into like we are playing pendulum and like no matter what you're playing, you have to have a way to make Electromite as early as possible. 
And, like, two, it means that you can't make, like, fun, unsearchable pendulum power cards, uh, because you could always find them with Electromite anyway. Uh, I think the couple of times that they've, like, retrained Electromite, and the new one as well, that's That Beyond Pendulum looks months. really good. Yeah, I think they're cool. I think they're neat, and I think they're, like, a version of it that I'm not going to, like, bash my head into the wall playing against. And, uh, Bear, tell us why you think uh, Kaiser Coliseum is the reason why Electromite should come off. Well, bro, Kaiser Coliseum should come back to three. It's actually not that broken. It's at three in the OCG oh, card. I, I actually do have a story. I was doing an alt format uh, where they had forgotten to ban uh, Electromite, and Pendulum was clearly the best deck. And I ended up getting to, I think, finals of their monthly tournament because I played... Kaiser Coliseum. And you can't <laughs> ma you can't make Electromite with one monster. So so you was like, yeah, Pendulum's obviously the best deck in Yu-Gi-Oh. Let me make this man's big break. Was everybody playing Pendulum too? <laughs> this what? what was everybody playing Pendulum as well? Oh yeah, no, everyone. I only won against Pendulum. I could not beat another deck to save my life. <laughs> So well, what you're saying is the card is just broken against Pendulum, but it's fair against everything else. Yeah, that's no, what no, saying. no, 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 no. There was a forbidden list in place where they banned everything else good except for Electrobite. All right, so so mm -hmm. go home, Bear. Go home. It's it's not happening. Alicia, what do you think about uh, our heavy metal foes? I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure I got a good reason or a good thought of what you feel about it. I, 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 I love metal foes, but... Electromite is basically not a metal foe card, let's it be really honest. Isn't. Yeah, it's not. Uh, but no, especially with them releasing, like, Beyond the Pendulum, like, they're basically admitting that they can't have Electromite back, so they're just making a replacement card so you forget about Electromite. So I think it's just Konami saying, we're never bringing this card back, and they've shown literally twice that they thought the whole mechanic was a mistake in the first place. Why are they trying to, like, enable it to the busted degree that they already tried to do in the first place and then had to dial it back you know it's just it doesn't really feel like it has a place just from konami standards and how they've been treating the pendulum mechanics so yeah they, they treat pendulum mechanics worse than my dad treats me god like it's bad it's whoo sheesh but um yeah that that was I 100% agree, and I know some players that definitely will not agree with, with uh, our statement about a heavy elemental foes Electromite. But fortunately, Beyond Pendulum is the card's name, correct? Yeah. I, all right, I, I was hoping I was saying it right. Is coming out, and hopefully that does, uh, you know, heals Pendulum's aching heart. But that's pretty much all that we have for today. I really have to thank every single one of you guys, man. You know, MBT, you're, you're awesome. Bear, you're, you're okay. Or, you know, you exist. <laughs> To your uh, defense, thanks. you know, it is an honor to, you know, have you here or whatever. What O's and not you. No, no, but seriously, it is, it's awesome to have you here. And Elysium, I thank you so much. Every single one of you guys, I do wish you the best. And uh, let's do this again, you know, sometime soon. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. All right. Thanks well, so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And as you know, uh, I'll definitely be catching you on the next video because you can check out these if you want to see more content. But uh, have an amazing day and I'll catch you on the next one.